Cooper, congratulations on a great, great lap time. Now, can you uh, maintain that sort of speed for the race, and how, or how much will you have to come off? Well, we obviously can't maintain that speed. Uh, I think if we come back to about a 20 or maybe a 21, but that won't be quite so easy to do because we expect, oh, we expect that the V8s are going to gobble us up on the up the mountain straight after the start. And uh, even though we're quicker than them, than those V8s behind us anyway, uh, we're quicker up the mountain and down the mountain, and they're quicker down the straight. So it'll be very hard for us to, to pass any of them. So so we'll just have to uh, persevere with, with all that and, and do our best. Are you going to attempt to keep those guys in sight for the whole race, or are you just going to let them run their own race and do the same thing yourself? I, I think what I'm going to have to do is just run my own race. Uh, be as far up as, at, in the front as I can after a couple of laps and then just settle down and run my own race and hopefully later on in the race their tyres will go off a bit. George, good luck. Here's Mike. Thank you very much, Peter Werrett. The final few minutes before the start of the 1983 James Hardy 1000. We'll be back after this break. Start time is almost on us, and it's now my pleasure to introduce the long-time race organiser for the James Hardy 1000, Mr Ivan Stibbard. Thank you, Gary. On behalf of the Australian Racing Drivers Club, I'd like to welcome you all to Bathurst, and I ask, lady and gentlemen, start your engines. And there you can hear the engines beginning to turn over. Only a few electric moments away from the start of the 1983 great race, the James Hardy 1000 from Mount Panorama here at Bathurst. Oh. You can really feel the atmosphere yes, and the tension starting to build. Yes, the uh, light relief as a bunch of balloons uh, flick across the screen there and fill the sky in the background. People scramble from the grid. The hectic scramble now as the mechanics, team managers, last minute advice shouted door slammed, drivers strapped in, everything's checked, set to go, engines running. A few of them reluctant to leave their cars, maybe just a little bit concerned about the, uh, the cars themselves. I noticed that uh, Larry Perkins stayed with Peter Rock for a long time, but gradually the grid area is being cleared, and yet nobody around the Dick Johnson Falcon. Well, it's too wet to get too close. <laughs> Maybe the paint will peel off as they rip up Mountain Straight the first time if it's that wet. Let's hope you drive there long enough for the paint to dry. Well, there's Dick. Goodness knows what thoughts are going through his mind. It's, he's had very little sleep. His crew have had none. They're now facing an exhausting day. But the adrenaline is pumping. You can see the green car back there in 10th spot on the grid. Cars to watch. Brock on the right of your screen. Been fastest all week. Alongside him is George Fury with the turbocharged Nissan. We could expect it won't be quite as fast off the line. Turbos don't get away as much as the V8, so he may be engulfed by someone like David Parsons. Or, or a Jansen, actually. Peter Jansen starting in car three, the yellow car. He'll be out for a quick go, and he'll be aiming at the slot alongside the uh, car in pole position. Jim Richards in the big black BMW. It, too, being a rather heavy car, may a little, maybe a little slow away. And you've got John Harvey and Warren Cullum right behind in big V8s, ready to go for that first corner. It could be very crowded, Gary. Gary Rogers and Alan Grice right behind them, too. I mean, uh, those two guys just don't know how to go slow. So the first corner is going to be the devil to pay. That's why they call it Hell Corner. Robbie Morris and One minute. Johnson side by side. But these are the men... We're just talking about further back in the third row of the grid. John Harvey, what a popular victory it would be if the veteran second driver in the whole dealer team could score here today at Mount Panorama. Never has won here. In the last few tenths of seconds ticking by, engines pumping. George Fury in the white car in the middle of your screen. 30-second board is out. Oh, and, and there's a slight creep by Brock's car. Jansen, too. Jansen follows. He has clutches. Must I just with just nervous left feet? The Seven Network welcomes you to the 1983 James Hardy 1000 from Mount Panorama at Bathurst. The flag ready to be raised. The start of the great race is 10 seconds away.
racing in the 83 James Hardy Classic. Peter Brock in the 05 car off the inside gets away smartly, but Fury comes up with him. Jansen has been outgunned on the inside by John Hardy, who will move to third for the first time. Jim Richards then coming back on the inside of Peter Jansen. There's Dick Johnson making a good start too. They head up Mountain Straight for the first time, and we have a safe first corner as they head up to GTX Bend. Well, they all got through that first bend safely, and that's worth breathing a deep sigh of relief about. And for the first 163 times up the mountain they go. George Fury holding on to second place, but it's Peter Brock who leads them out. In third place, it's his teammate John Harvey, and the BMW of Jim Richards has shouldered his way past Peter Jansen to take up fourth spot. Jansen's back there in fifth. will be happy with that place. Dick Johnson going well in the big green falcon. Brock for the first time up towards the cutting. Right out brushes the weeds. It won't be the first car to take a few tips of past bail and them. There's Johnson now in the green car coming through. Oh, and what a great effort to get that car to the start line. Let's just keep our fingers crossed as we pray that he can keep the car going. Bobby Morris in car number four, sweeping across the top of the mountain. This is an undulating, nightmarish roller coaster ride into McKillney Park for the first time. And listen for the crowd cheering as they see Peter Brock in the lead. sweeping down towards the dipper. Richard, close up there in that group running in for the second spot. That's Richard in the black car, lifts the wheel. My heavens, he's quick through there. Morris going well. And Brock then will be the first car onto Conrad Strait. Richards, I notice, already trying to look for a way through John Harvey in third and fourth positions, but